sports science has has uh, continued to play a role in, in uh, cycling in, in many different forms, and uh, you know it continues to evolve. And in, in, in whether it's the, the the training of the athlete, the nutrition, the technology that's utilized, whether it's apparel, whether it's the bikes, whether it's the the wheels, all that, it's continued to advance cycling in many different ways. It's hard to measure totally, you know, all the improvements and give a percentage how much sports science has improved the performance of cyclists over the years. You got to kind of break it down into categories, so to speak, into aerodynamics, into into clothing, into sports nutrition, into training. Um, and then there's communication too, you know, uh, the, the radio systems that are now in use, um, things like that. Then there's uh, thermal regulation, cooling, things, things of that nature. I think some of the things that are now starting to emerge uh, are areas in how to cool the athlete. Um, you know, as we're out there in competition or, or even in training, you know, their, their core temperature rises, they start losing a lot of fluid. Sports science has addressed it from a sports nutrition standpoint, but if you can look at ways in which you can manipulate the athlete's core temperature so it just doesn't get as hot, so to speak, inside the athlete, you could improve performance. And there's, there's things that, that um, many people are looking at, ice vests, cooling vests, cooling apparatuses, maybe things on the handlebars that would cool the venous return of blood to the heart, cooling devices in the, in the helmets that would help keep the head a little cooler. If you probably rolled all that up, um, the overall improvement has been massive, you know, probably 15%. The athletes are probably performing 15% better than they were 30, 40 years ago.